66. At that time died Tajad, the son of Bedad, king of Edom, and Samla from Mesreka, from the country of the children of the east, reigned in his place. In the thirteenth year of the reign of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, which was the hundred and twenty-fifth year of the Israelites, going down into Egypt, Samla had reigned over Edom eighteen years. And when he reigned, he drew forth his host to go and fight against Sipho, the son of Eliphaz, and the children of Jitim, because they had made war against Antias, king of Africa, and they destroyed his whole army. But he did not engage with him, for the children of Esau prevented him, saying, He was their brother. So Samla listened to the voice of the children of Esau, and turned back with all his forces to the land of Edom, and did not proceed to fight against Sepho, the son of Eliphaz. And Pharaoh, king of Egypt, heard this thing, saying, Samla, king of Edom, has resolved to fight the children of Jitim, and afterward he will come to fight against Egypt. And when the Egyptians heard this matter, they increased the labor upon the children of Israel, lest the Israelites should do unto them as they did unto them in their war with the children of Esau in the days of Hadad. So the Egyptians said unto the children of Israel, Hasten and do your work, and finish your task, and strengthen the land, lest the children of Esau, your brethren, should come to fight against us, for on your account will they come against us. And the children of Israel did the work of the men of Egypt day by day. And the Egyptians afflicted the children of Israel in order to lessen them in the land. But as the Egyptians increased the labor upon the children of Israel, so did the children of Israel increase and multiply. And all Egypt was filled with the children of Israel. And in the hundred and twenty-fifth year of Israel's going down into Egypt, all the Egyptians saw that their counsel did not succeed against Israel, but that they increased and grew. And the land of Egypt and the land of Goshen were filled with the children of Israel. So all the elders of Egypt, Egypt and its wise men came before the king and bowed down to him and sat before him. And all the elders of Egypt and the wise men thereof said unto the king, May the king live forever. Thou didst counsel us the counsel against the children of Israel. I would it unto them according to the word of the king. But in proportion to the increase of the labor, so do they increase and grow in the land. And behold, the whole country is filled with them. Now therefore, our Lord and King, the eyes of all Egypt are upon thee, to give them advice with thy wisdom, by which they may prevail over Israel to destroy them, or to diminish them from the land. And the king answered them, saying, Give you counsel in this matter, that we may know what to do unto them. And an officer, one of the king's counselors, whose name was Job from Mesopotamia, in the land of Uz, answered the king, saying, If it please the king, let him hear the counsel of his servant. And the king said unto him, Speak. And Job spoke before the king, the princes, and before all the elders of Egypt, saying, Behold, the counsel of the king which he advised formerly respecting the labor of the children of Israel is very good, and you must not remove from them that labor forever. But this is the advice counsel by which you may lessen them, if it seems good to the king to afflict them. Behold, we have feared war for a long time, and we said, When Israel becomes fruitful in the land, they will drive us from the land if a war should take place. Mama. Yeah. Daddy. If it please the king, let a royal decree go forth, and let it be written in the laws of Egypt. 
which shall not be revoked, that every male child born to the Israelites, his blood shall be spilled upon the ground. And by your doing this, when all the male children of Israel shall have died, the evil of their wars will cease. Let the king do so, and send for all the Hebrew midwives, and order them in this matter to execute it. So the thing pleased the king and the princess, and the king did according to the word of Job. And the king sent for the Hebrew midwives to be called, of which the name of one was Shephra, and the name of the other Pua. And the midwives came before the king, and stood in his presence. And the king said unto them, When you do the office of a midwife to the Hebrew women, and see them upon the stools. If it be a son, then you shall kill him. But if it be a daughter, then she shall live. But if you will not do this thing, then will I burn you up and all your houses with fire. But the midwives feared God and did not hearken to the king of Egypt nor to his words. And when the Hebrew women brought forth to the midwife son or daughter, then did the midwife do all that was necessary to the child and let it live. Thus did the midwives all the days. And this thing was told to the king, and he sent and called for the midwives, and he said to them, Why have you done this thing and have saved the children alive? And the midwives answered and spoke together before the king, saying, let not the king think that the Hebrew women are as the Egyptian women, for all the children of Israel are hale, and before the midwife comes to them, they are delivered, and as for the, us thy handmaids, for many days no Hebrew woman has brought forth upon us, for all the Hebrew women are their own midwives, because they are hale. And Pharaoh heard their words and believed them in this matter. And the midwives went away from the king, and God dealt well with them, and the people multiplied and waxed exceedingly. 67. There was a man in the land of Egypt of the seed of Levi, whose name was Amram, the son of Kehat, the son of Levi, the son of Israel. And this man went and took a wife, namely Jochebed, the daughter of Levi, his father's sister. And she was 126 years old, and he came unto her. And the woman conceived and bare a daughter, and she called her name Miriam. Because in those days the Egyptians had embittered the lives of the children of Israel. And she conceived again and bare a son, and she called his name Aaron. For in the days of her conception, Pharaoh began to spill the blood of the male children of Israel. In those days died Zepho, the son of Eliphaz, son of Esau, king of Chittim, and Janias, reigned in his stead. At the time that Zepho reigned over the children of Chittim was fifty years, and he died and was buried in the city of Nabna in the land of Chittim. And Janias, one of the mighty men of the children of Chittim, reigned after him, and he reigned fifty years. And it was after the death of the king of Chittim that Balaam, the son of Beor, fled from the land of Chittim. And he went and came to Egypt, the Pharaoh, king of Egypt. And Pharaoh received him with great honor, for he had heard of his wisdom, and he gave his presence and made him for a counselor and angradized him. And Balaam dwelt in Egypt in honor with all the nobles of the king, and the nobles exalted him, because they all coveted to learn his wisdom. And in the hundred and thirtieth year of Israel's going down to Egypt, Pharaoh dreamed that he was sitting upon his kingly throne, and lifted up his eyes, and saw an old man standing before him, and there were scales in the hands of the old man. Such scales are used by merchants. And the old man took the scales and hanged them before Pharaoh. And the old man took all the elders of Egypt, and all its nobles and great men, and he tied them together and put them in one scale. 
and he took a milk kit and put it into the other scale, and the kit preponderated over all. And Pharaoh was astonished at this dreadful vision, why the kid should preponderate over all. And Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And Pharaoh rose up early in the morning, and called all his servants, and related to them the dream. And the men were greatly afraid. And the king said to all his wise men, Interpret, I pray you, the dream which I dreamed, that I may know it. And Balaam the son of Beor answered the king and said unto him, This means nothing else but a great evil that will spring up against Egypt in the latter days. For a son will be born to Israel who will destroy all Egypt and its inhabitants and bring forth the Israelites from Egypt with a mighty hand. Now therefore, O king, take counsel upon this matter that you may destroy the hope of the children of Israel under expectation before this evil arise against Egypt. And the king said unto Balaam, And what shall we do unto Israel? Surely after a certain manner did we at first counsel against them and could not prevail over them. Now therefore give you also advice against them by which we may prevail over them. And Balaam answered the king, saying, Send now, and call thy two counselors, and we will see what their advice is upon this matter, and afterward thy servant will speak. And the king sent and called his two counselors, Ruel the Midianite, and Job the Uzite. And they came and sat before the king. And the king said to them, Behold, you have both heard the dream which I have dreamed, and the interpretation thereof. Now therefore, give counsel, and know, and see what is to be done to the children of Israel, whereby we may prevail over them, before their evil shall spring up against us. And Reuel the Midianite answered the king, and said, May the king live, may the king live forever. If it seem good to the king, let him desist from the Hebrews and leave them, and let him not stretch forth his hand against them. For these are they whom the Lord chose in days of old, and took as the lot of his inheritance from amongst all the nations of the earth and the kings of the earth. And who is there that stretched his hand against them with impunity, of whom their God was not avenged. Surely thou knowest that when Abraham went down to Egypt, Pharaoh, the former king of Egypt, saw Sarah his wife, and took her for wife, because Abraham said, She is my sister, for he was afraid, lest the men of Egypt should slay him on account of his wife. And when the king of Egypt had taken Sarah, then God smote him and his household with heavy plagues, until he restored unto Abraham his wife Sarah, then was he healed. And Abimelech the Gerarite, king of the Philistines, God punished on account of Sarah, wife of Abraham, in stopping up every womb from man to beast. When their God came to Abimelech in the dream of night and terrified him in order that he might restore to Abraham Sarah, whom he had taken, and afterward all the people of Gerar were punished on account of Sarah, and Abraham prayed to his God for them, and he was entreated of him, and he healed them. And Abimelech feared all, his, all this evil that came upon him and his people, and he returned to Abraham his wife Sarah, and gave him with her many gifts. He did so also to Isaac when he had driven him from Gerar, and God had done wonderful things to him that all the water courses of Gerar were dried up, and their productive trees did not bring forth. Until Abimelech of Gerar and Hazat, one of his friends, and Pichol, the captain of his host, went to him, and they bent and bowed down before him to the ground. And they requested of him to supplicate for them, and he prayed to the Lord for them, and the Lord was entreated of him, and he healed them. Jacob also the plain man was delivered to his integrity from the hand of his brother Esau and the hand of Laban the Syrian his mother's brother who had sought his life likewise from the hand of all the kings of Canaan who had come together against him 
and his children to destroy them, and the Lord delivered them out of their hands, that they turned upon them and smote them. For who had ever stretched forth his hand against them with impunity? Surely Pharaoh the former, thy father's father, raised Joseph the son of Jacob above all the princes of the land of Egypt, when he saw his wisdom, for through his wisdom he rescued all the inhabitants of the land from the famine, after which he ordered Jacob and his children to come down to Egypt, in order that through their virtue the land of Egypt and the land of Goshen might be delivered from the famine. Now therefore, if it seem good in thine eyes, cease from destroying the children of Israel. But if it be not thy will that they shall dwell in Egypt, send them forth from here, that they may go to the land of Canaan, the land where their ancestors sojourned. And when Pharaoh heard the words of Jethro, he was very angry with him, so that he rose with shame from the king's presence. And he went to Midian his land, and took Joseph's stick with him. And the king said to Job the Uzziah, What sayest thou, Job? What is thy advice respecting the Hebrews? So Job said to the king, Behold, all the inhabitants of the land are in their power. Let the king do as it seems good in his eyes. And the king said unto Balaam, What dost thou say, Balaam? Speak thy word that we may hear it. And Balaam said to the king, Of all that the king has counseled against the Hebrews, will they be delivered? And the king will not be able to prevail over them with any counsel. For if thou thinkest to lessen them by the flaming fire, thou canst not prevail over them. For surely their God delivered Abraham their father from Ur of the Chaldeans. And if thou thinkest to destroy them with a sword, surely Isaac their father was delivered from it, and a ram was placed in his stead. And if it with hard and regular labor thou thinkest to lessen them, thou wilt not prevail even in this, for their father Jacob served Laban in all manner of hard work and prospered. Now therefore, O king, hear my words, for this is the counsel which is counseled against them, by which thou wilt prevail over them, and from which thou shouldst not depart. If it please the king, let him order all the children which shall be born from this day forward to be thrown into the water, for by this canst thou wipe away their name, for none of them, nor of their fathers, were tried in this manner. And the king heard the words of Balaam, and the thing pleased the king and the princess, and the king did according to the word of Balaam. And the king ordered the proclamation to be issued and a law to be made throughout the land of Egypt, saying, Every male child born to the Hebrews from this day forward shall be thrown into the water. And Pharaoh called unto all his servants, saying, Go now and seek throughout the land of Goshen where the children of Israel are, and see that every son born to the Hebrews shall be cast into the river, but every daughter you shall let live. And when the children of Israel heard this thing, which Pharaoh had commanded, to cast their male children into the river, some of the people separated from their wives, and others adhered to them. And from that day forward, when the time of delivery arrived to those women of Israel, who had remained with their husbands, they went to the field to bring forth there. And they brought forth in the field, and left their children upon the field, and returned home. And the Lord, who had sworn to their ancestors to multiply them, sent one of his ministering angels, which are in heaven, to wash each child in water, to anoint and sweat, Sweated, and to put into his its hands two smooth stones, from one of which it sucked milk, and from the other honey, and he caused its hair to grow to its knees, by which it might cover itself, to comfort it, and to cleave to it through his compassion for it. And when God had compassion over them and had desired to multiply them upon the face of the land, he ordered his earth to receive them to be preserved, there until the time of their growing up, 
after which the earth opened its mouth and vomited them forth, and they sprouted forth from the city, like the herb of the earth, and the grass of the forest, and they returned each to his family, and to his father's house, and they remained with them. And the babes of the children of Israel were upon the earth like the herb of the field, through God's grace to them. When all the Egyptians saw this thing, they went forth each to his field with his yoke of oxen and his plowshare, and they plow it up as one flows the earth at seed time. And when they flowed, they were unable to hurt the infants of the children of Israel, so the people increased and waxed exceedingly. And Pharaoh ordered his officers daily to go to Goshen to seek for the babes of the children of Israel. And when they had sought and found one, they took it from its mother's bosom by force, and they threw it into the river, but the female child they left with its mother. Thus did the Egyptians to do to the Israelites all the days. 68. And it was at that time the Spirit of God was upon Miriam, the daughter of Amram, the sister of Aaron. And she went forth and prophesied about the house, saying, Behold, a son will be born unto us from my father and mother this time, and he will save Israel from the hands of Egypt. And when Amram heard the words of his daughter, he went and took his wife back to the house after he had driven her away at the time when Pharaoh ordered every male child of the house of Jacob to be thrown into the water. So Amram took Jochebed his wife three years after he had driven her away, and he came to her and she conceived. And at the end of seven months from her conception, she brought forth a son, and the whole house was filled with great light as of the light of the sun and moon at the, at the time of their shining. And when the woman saw that the child that it was good and pleasing to the sight, she hid it for three months in an inner room. In those days, the Egyptians conspired to destroy all the Hebrews there. And the Egyptian women went to Goshen where the children of Israel were, and they carried their young ones upon their shoulders, their babes who could not yet speak. And in those days when the women of the children of Israel brought forth, each woman had hidden her son from before the Egyptians, that the Egyptians might not know of their bringing forth, and might not destroy them from the land. And the Egyptian women came to Goshen, and their children who could not speak were upon their shoulders. And when an Egyptian woman came into the house of a Hebrew woman, her babe began to cry. And when it cried, the children that was in the room, the inner room, answered it. So the Egyptian women went and told it at the house of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh sent his officers to take the children and slay them. Thus did the Egyptians to the Hebrew women all the days. And it was at that time, about three months from Jochebed's concealment of her son, that the thing was known in the Pharaoh's house. And the woman hastened to take away her son before the officers came. And she took for him an ark of bulrushes and dulled it with slime and with pitch, and put the children the, the child therein, and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. And his sister Miriam stood afar off to know what would be done to him and what would become of the words. And God sent forth. And God sent forth at that time a terrible heat in the land of Egypt, which burned up the flesh of man like the sun in his circuit, and it greatly oppressed the Egyptians. And all the Egyptians went down to bathe in the river on account of the consuming heat which burned up their flesh. And Bathia, the, son, the daughter of Pharaoh, went also to bathe in the river, owing to the consuming heat, and her maidens walked at the riverside, and all the women of Egypt as well. And Batya lifted up her eyes to the river, and she saw the ark upon the water, and sent her maid to fetch it. 
And she opened it and saw the child, and behold, the babe wept, and she had compassion on him, and she said, This is one of the Hebrew children. And all the women of Egypt walking on the riverside desired to give him suck, but he would not suck, for this thing was from the Lord, in order to restore him to his mother's breast. And Miriam his sister was at that time amongst the Egyptian women at the riverside, and she saw this thing, and she said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and fetch a nurse of the Hebrew women, that she may nurse the child for thee? And Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Go, and the young man went, and called the child's mother. And Pharaoh's daughter said to Josephet, Take this child away and suckle it for me, and I will pay thee thy wages. Two bits of silver daily. And the woman took the child and nursed it. And at the end of two years, when the child grew up, she brought him to the daughter of Pharaoh, and he was unto her as a son, and she called his name Moses, for she said, Because I drew him out of the water. And Amram says, Father, called his name Chabar, for he said, It was for him that he associated with his wife whom he had turned away. And Jochebed's mother called his name Tikutiel, because she said, I have hoped for him to the Almighty, and God restored him unto me. And Miriam, his sister, called him Jared, for she descended after him to the river to know what his end would be. And Aaron, his brother, called his name Abi Zanuk, saying, My father left my mother and returned to her on his account. And Kehat, the father of Amram, called his name Abigdor, because on his account did God repair the breach of the house of Jacob that they could no longer throw their male children into the water. And their nurse called him Abi Socho, saying, In his tabernacle was he hidden for three months on account of the children of Ham. And all Israel called his name Shemaiah, son of Nathanael, for they said, In his days has God heard their cries and rescued them from their oppressors. And Moses was in Pharaoh's house and was unto Bathia, Pharaoh's daughter, as a son. And Moses grew up amongst the king's children. 69. And the king of Edom died in those days in the eighteenth year of his reign, and was buried in his temple which he had built for himself as his royal residence in the land of Edom. And the children of his house sent to Petor, which is upon the river, and they fetched from there a young man of beautiful eyes and comely aspect, whose name was Saul. And they made him king over them and the place of Zamla. And Saul reigned over all the children of Esau in the land of Edom for forty years. Our Pharaoh king of Egypt saw that the counsel which Balaam had advised respecting the children of Israel did not succeed, but that still they were fruitful multiplied and increased throughout the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh commanded in those days that proclamation should be issued throughout Egypt to the children of Israel, saying, No man shall diminish anything of his daily labor, and the man who shall be found deficient in his labor, which he performs daily, whether in mortar or in bricks, then his youngest son shall be put in their place. And the labor of Egypt strengthened upon the children of Israel in those days. And behold, if one brick was deficient in any man's daily labor, the Egyptians took his youngest boy by force from his mother and put him into the building in the place of the brick which his father had left wanting. And the men of Egypt did so to all the children of Israel day by day, all the days for a long period. But the tribe of Levi did not at that time work with the Israelites, the brethren, from the beginning, for the children of Levi knew the cunning of the Egyptians, which they exercised at first toward the Israelites. 70. And in the third year from the birth of Moses, Pharaoh was sitting at a banquet when Alparanir, the queen, was sitting at his right and Balthia at his left, 
And the lad Moses was lying upon her bosom, and Balaam the son of Beor with his two sons, and all the princes of the kingdom were sitting at table in the king's presence. And the lad stretched forth his hand upon the king's head, and took the crown from the king's head, and placed it on his own head. And when the king and the princes saw the work which the boy had done, the king and princes were terrified, and one man to his neighbor expressed astonishment. And the king said unto the princes who were before him at table, What speak you, and what say you, O ye princes, in this matter? And what is to be the judgment against the boy on account of this act? And Balaam the son of Beor, the magician, answered before the king and princes, and he said, Remember now, O my lord and king, the dream which thou didst dream many days since, and thou which thy servant interpreted unto thee. Now therefore this is a child from the Hebrew children, in whom is the Spirit of God. And let not my lord the king imagine that this youngster did this thing without knowledge. For he is a Hebrew boy, and wisdom and understanding are with him. Although he is yet a child, and with wisdom has he done this, and chosen unto himself the kingdom of Egypt. For this is the manner of all the Hebrews to deceive kings and their nobles, to do all these things cunningly, in order to make the kings of the earth and their men tremble. Surely thou knowest that Abraham their father acted thus, who deceived the army of Nimrod king of Babel, and Abimelech king of Gerar, and that he possessed himself of the land of the children of Heth, and all the kingdoms of Canaan, and that he descended into Egypt, and said of Sarah his wife, She is my sister, in order to mislead Egypt and her king. His son Isaac also did so when he went to Gerar and dwelt there, and his strength prevailed over the army of Abimelech, king of the Philistines. He also thought of making the kingdom of the Philistines stumble in saying that Rebekah, his wife, was his sister. Jacob also dealt treacherously with his brother and took from his hand his birthright and his blessing. He went down to Padan Aram to the house of Laban, his mother's brother, and cunningly obtained from his, him his daughter, his cattle, and all belonging to him and fled away and returned to the land of Canaan to his father. His son sold their brother Joseph, who went down into Egypt and became a slave, and was placed in the prison house for twelve years, until the former pharaoh dreamed dreams, and withdrew him from the prison house, and magnified him above all the princes in Egypt on account of his interpreting his dreams to him. And when God caused a famine throughout the land, he sent forth and brought his father and all his brothers and the whole of his father's household and supported them without price or reward and bought the Egyptians for slaves. Now therefore, my Lord King, behold, this child has risen up in their stead in Egypt to do according to their deeds and to trifle with every king, prince, and judge. If it please the king, let us now spill his blood upon the ground, lest he grow up and take away the government from thy hand, and the hope of Egypt perish after he shall have reigned. And Balaam said to the king, Let us moreover call for all the judges of Egypt, and the wise men thereof, and let us know if the judgment of death is due to this boy, as thou didst say, and then we will slay him. And Pharaoh sent and called for all the wise men of Egypt, and they came before the king. And an angel of the Lord came amongst them, and he was like one of the wise men of Egypt. And the king said to the wise men, Surely you have heard what this Hebrew boy who is the ha in the house has done, and thus has Balaam judged in the matter. Now judge you also, and see what is due to the boy for the act he has committed. And the angel, who seemed like one of the wise men of Pharaoh, answered and said as follows, Before all the wise men of Egypt, and before the king and the princes, 
If it please the king, let the king send for men who shall bring before him an onyx stone and a coal of fire and place them before the child. And if the child shall stretch forth his hand and take the onyx stone, then shall we know that with wisdom has the youth done all that he has done, and we must slay him. But if he stretch forth his hand upon the coal, then shall we know what it was not with knowledge that he did this thing, and he shall live. And the thing seemed good in the eyes of the king and the princess. So the king did according to the word of the angel of the Lord. And the king ordered the onyx stone and coal to be brought and placed before Moses. And they placed the boy before them, and the lad endeavored to stretch forth his hand to the onyx stone. But the angel of the Lord took his hand and placed it upon the coal. And the coal became extinguished in his hand, and he lifted it up and put it into his mouth, and burned part of his lips and part of his tongue, and he became heavy in mouth and tongue. And when the king and princes saw this, they knew that Moses had not acted with wisdom in taking off the crown from the king's head. So the king and princes refrained from slaying the child, so Moses remained in Pharaoh's house, growing up, and the Lord was with him. And whilst the boy was in the king's house, he was robed in purple, and he grew amongst the children of the king. And when Moses grew up in the king's house, Batia, the daughter of Pharaoh, considered him as a son, and all the household of Pharaoh honored him, and all the men of Egypt were afraid of him. And he daily went forth and came into the land of Goshen, where his brethren, the children of Israel, were, and Moses saw them daily in shortness of breath and hard labor. And Moses asked them, saying, Wherefore is this labor meted out unto you day by day? And they told him all that had befallen them, and all the injunc injunctions which Pharaoh had put upon them before his birth. And they told him all the counsels which Balaam, the son of Beor, had counseled against them, and what he had also counseled against him in order to slay him when he had taken the king's crown from off his head. When Moses heard these things, his anger was kindled against Balaam, and he sought to kill him, and he was in ambush for him day by day. And Balaam was afraid of Moses, and he and his two sons rose up and went forth from Egypt. And they fled and delivered their souls, and betook themselves to the land of Cush, to Kikianus, king of Cush. And Moses was in the king's house, going out and coming in. The Lord gave him favor in the eyes of Pharaoh, and in the eyes of all his servants, and in the eyes of all the people of Egypt. And they loved Moses exceedingly. And the day arrived when Moses went to Goshen to see his brethren that he saw the children of Israel in their burdens and hard labor. And Moses was grieved on their account. And Moses returned to Egypt and came to the house of Pharaoh and came before the king. And Moses bowed down before the king. And Moses said unto Pharaoh, I pray thee, my lord, I have come to seek a small request from thee. Turn not away my face empty. And Pharaoh said unto him, Speak. And Moses said unto Pharaoh, Let there be given unto thy servants the children of Israel who are in Goshen, one day to rest therein from their labor. And the king answered Moses and said, Behold, I have lifted up thy face in the sting to grant thy request. And Pharaoh ordered a proclamation to be issued throughout Egypt and Goshen, saying, to you, all the children of Israel, thus says the king, For six days you shall do your work and labor, but on the seventh day you shall rest, and shall not perform any work. Thus shall you do all the days, as the king and Moses the son of Bathia have commanded. 
And Moses rejoiced at this thing which the king had granted to him. And all the children of Israel did as Moses ordered them. For this thing was from the Lord to the children of Israel. For the Lord had begun to remember the children of Israel to save them for the sake of their fathers. And the Lord was with Moses, and his fame went throughout Egypt. And Moses came, became great in the eyes of all the Egyptians, and in the eyes of all the children of Israel, seeking good for his people Israel, and speaking words of peace regarding them to the king. 71. And when Moses was 18 years old, he desired to see his father, and mother, and he went to them to Goshen, and when Moses had come near Goshen, he came to the place where the children of Israel were engaged in work, and he observed their burdens, and he saw an Egyptian smiting one of his Hebrew brethren. And when the man who was beaten saw Moses, he <coughs> ran to him for help, for the man Moses was greatly respected in the house of Pharaoh. And he said to him, My Lord, attend to me. This Egyptian came to my house in the night, bound me, and came to my wife in my presence, and now he seeks to take my life away. And when Moses heard this wicked thing, his anger was kindled against the Egyptian, and he turned his this way and the other. And when he saw there was no man there, he smote the Egyptian and hid him in the sand, and delivered the Hebrew from the hand of him that smote him. And the Hebrew went to his house, and Moses returned to his home. I went forth and came back to the king's house. And when the man had returned home, he thought of repudiating his wife, for it was not right in the house of Jacob for any man to come to his wife after she had been defiled. And the woman went and told her brothers, and the woman's brother sought to slay him, and he fled to his house and escaped. And on the second day Moses went forth to his brethren and saw, and behold, two men were quarreling, and he said to the wicked one, Why dost thou smite thy neighbor? And he answered him and said to him, Who has set thee for prince and judge over us? Dost thou think to slay me as thou didst slay the Egyptian? And Moses was afraid, and he said, Surely the thing is known. And Pharaoh heard of this affair, and he ordered Moses to be slain. So God sent his angel, and he appeared unto Pharaoh in the likeness of a captain of the guard. And the angel of the Lord took the sword from the hand of the captain of the guard, and took his head off with it. For the likeness of the captain of the guard was turned into the likeness of Moses. And the angel of the Lord took hold of the right hand of Moses, and brought him forth from Egypt, and placed him from without the borders of Egypt a distance of forty days' journey. And Aaron his brother alone remained in the land of Egypt, and he prophesied to the children of Israel, saying, Thus says the Lord God of your ancestors, Throw away each man the abominations of his eyes, and do not defile yourselves with the idols of Egypt. And the children of Israel rebelled and would not hearken to Aaron at that time, and the Lord thought to destroy them. Were it not that the Lord remembered the covenant which he had made with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? In those days the hand of Pharaoh continued to be severe against the children of Israel, and he crushed and oppressed them until the time when God sent forth his word and took notice of them. 72. And it was in those days that where there was a great war between the children of Cush and the children of the east and Aram. And they rebelled against the king of Cush in whose hands they were. So Kikianus, king of Cush, went forth with all the children of Cush a people numerous as the sand. And he went to fight against Aram, the children of the east, to bring them under subjection. And when Kikianus went out, he left Balaam, the magician, with his two sons, to guard the city, and the lowest sort of the people of the land. So Kikianus went forth to Aram, and the children of the east, and he fought against them and smote them. And they all fell down wounded before Kikianus, 
and his people, and he took many of them captives, and he brought them under subjection as at first, and encamped upon their land to take tribute from them as usual. And Balaam the son of Beor, when the king of Cush had left him to guard the city and the poor of the city, he rose up and advised the people of the land to rebel against King Kikianus, not to let him enter the city when he should come home. And the people of the land hearkened to him, and they swore to him, and made him king over them. And his two sons were captains of the army. So they rose up and raised the walls of the city at the two corners, and they built an exceeding strong building. And at the third corner they dug ditches without number between the city and the river which surrounded the whole land of Cush, and they made the waters of the river burst forth there. At the fourth corner they collected numerous serpents by their incantations and enchantments, and they fortified the city and dwelt therein, and no one went out or in before them. And Kikianus fought against Aram and the children of the east, and he subdued them as before, and they gave him their usual tribute, and he went and returned to his land. And when Kikianus the king of Cush approached the city, and all the captains of the forces with him, they lifted up their eyes and saw that the walls of the city were built up and greatly elevated, so the men were astonished at this. And they said one to the other, It is because they saw that we were delayed in battle and were greatly afraid of us. Therefore have they done this thing and raised the city walls and fortified them so that the kings of Canaan might not come in battle against them. So the king and the troops approached the city door, and they looked up, and behold, all the gates of the city were closed. And they called out to the sentinels, saying, Open unto us, that we may enter the city. But the sentinels refused to open to them by the order of Balaam the magician, their king. They suffered them not to enter their city. So they raised a battle with them opposite the city gate, and one hundred and Thirty men of the army at Kikianos fell on that day, and on the next day they continued to fight, and they fought at the side of the river. They endeavored to pass, but were not able. So some of them sank in the pits and died. So the king ordered them to cut down trees to make rafts, upon which they might pass to them, and they did so. And when they came to the place of the ditches, the waters revolved by mills, and two hundred men upon ten rafts were drowned. And on the third day they came to fight at the side where the serpents were, but they could not approach there, for the serpents slew them one hundred and seventy men. And they ceased fighting against Cush, and they besieged Cush for nine years. No person came out or in. At that time that the war and the siege were against Cush, Moses fled from Egypt from Pharaoh, who sought to kill him for having slain the Egyptian. And Moses was eighteen years old when he fled from Egypt from the presence of Pharaoh, and he fled and escaped to the camp of Kikianus, which at that time was besieging Cush. And Moses was nine years in the camp of Kikianus, king of Cush, all the time that they were besieging Cush, and Moses went out and came in with them. And the king and princess and all the fighting men loved Moses, for he was great and worthy. His stature was like a noble lion, his face was like the sun, and his strength was like that of a lion, and he was counselor to the king. And at the end of nine years, Kikianus was seized with a mortal disease, and his illness prevailed over him, and he died on the seventh day. So his servants embalmed him and carried him and buried him opposite the city gate to the north of the land of Egypt. And they built over him an elegant, strong, and high building, and they placed great stones below. And the king's scribes engraved upon those stones all the might of their king Kikianus, and all his battles which he had fought. Behold, they are written there at this day. Now after the death of Kikianus, king of Cush, he grieved his men and troops greatly on account of the war. So they said one to the other, Give us counsel what we are to do at this time, as we have resided in the wilderness nine years away from our homes. 
if we say we will fight against the city, many of us will fall wounded or killed, and if we remain here in the siege, we shall also die. For now all the kings of Aram and of the children of the east will hear that our king is dead, and they will attack us suddenly in a hostile manner, and they will fight against us and leave no remnant of us. Now therefore let us go and make a king over us, and let us remain in the siege until the city is delivered up to us. And they wished to choose on that day a man for king from the army of Kikianos, and they found no object of their choice like Moses to reign over them. And they hastened and stripped off each of man his garments and cast them upon the ground, and they made a great heap and placed Moses thereon. And they rose up and blew with trumpets and called out before him and said, May the king live, may the king live. And all the people and nobles swore unto him to give him for a wife Adonaiah the queen, the Cushite, wife of Kikianus. And they made Moses king over them on that day. And all the people of Cush issued a proclamation on that day, saying, Every man must give something to Moses of what is in his possession. And they spread out a sheet upon the heap, and every man cast into something of what he had done, one a gold earring and the other a coin. Also onyx stones, bedellium, pearls, and marble did the children of Cush cast unto Moses upon the heap, also silver and gold in great abundance. And Moses took all the silver and gold, and all the vessels, and the bedellium and onyx stones, which all the children of Cush had given to him, and he placed them amongst his treasures. And Moses reigned over the children of Cush on that day in the place of Kikianus, king of Cush. 73. In the fifty-fifth year of the reign of Pharaoh, king of Egypt, that is in the hundred and fifty-seventh year of the Israelites going down into Egypt, reigned Moses in Cush. Moses was twenty-seven years old when he began to reign over Cush, and forty years did he reign. And the Lord granted Moses favor and grace in the eyes of all the children of Gush, and the children of Gush loved him exceedingly. So Moses was favored by the Lord and by men. And in the seventh day of his reign, all the children of Gush assembled and came before Moses, and bowed down to him to the ground. And all the children spoke together in the presence of the king, saying, Give us counsel that we may see what is to be done to the city, for it is now nine years that we have been besieging round about the city, and have not seen our children and our wives. So the king answered them, saying, If you will hearken to my voice and all that I shall command you, then will the Lord give the city into our hands, and we shall subdue it. For if we fight with them as in the former battle which we had with them, before the death of Kikianus, many of us will fall down wounded as before. Now therefore, behold, here is counsel for you in this matter. If you will hearken to my voice, then will the city be delivered into our hands. So all the forces answered the king, saying, All that our Lord shall command that we will, do, will we do. And Moses said unto them, Pass through and proclaim a voice in the whole camp unto all the people, saying, Thus says the king, Go into the forest and bring with you of the young ones of the stork, each man a young, ma young one in his hand, and any person transgressing the word of the king, who shall not bring his young one, he shall die, and the king will take all belonging to him, and when you shall bring them, they shall be in your keeping. You shall rear them until they grow up, and you shall teach them to the dart upon as is the way of the young ones of the hawk. So all the children of Cush heard the words of Moses, and they rose up and caused a proclamation to be issued throughout the camp, saying, And to you, all the children of Cush, the king's order is that you go all together to the forest and catch there the young storks, each man his young one in his hand, and you shall bring them home. And any person violating the order of the king shall die, and the king will take all that belongs to him. And all the people did so, and they went out to the wood, and they climbed the fir trees, and caught each man a young one in his hand, all the young of the storks, and they brought them in 
to the desert and rear them by order of the king, and they taught them to dart upon, similar to the young hawks. And after the young storks were reared, the king ordered them to be hungered for three days, and all the people did so. And on the third day, the king said unto them, Strengthen yourselves and become valiant men, and put on each man his armor, and gird on his sword upon him, and ride each man his horse, and t take each his young stork in his hand. And we will rise up and fight against the city at the place where the serpents are. And all the people did as the king had ordered. And they took each man his young one in his hand, and they went away. And when they came to the place of the serpents, the king said to them, Send forth each man his young stork upon the serpents. And they sent forth each man his young stork at the king's order. And the young storks ran upon the serpents, and they devoured them all, and destroyed them out of that place. And when the king and people had seen that all the serpents were destroyed in that place, all the people set up a great shout, and they approached and fought against the city, and took it and subdued it, and they entered the city. And there died on that day one thousand and one hundred men of the people of the city, all that inhabited the city, but of the people besieging not one died. So all the children of Cush went each to his home, to his wife and children, and to all belonging to him. And Balaam the magician, when he saw that the city was taken, he opened the gate, and he and his two sons and eight brothers fled and returned to Egypt to Pharaoh, king of Egypt. They are the sorcerers and magicians who are mentioned in the book of the law, standing against Moses when the Lord brought the plagues upon Egypt. So Moses took the city by his wisdom, and the children of Cush placed him on the throne instead of Kikianus, king of Cush. And they placed the royal crown upon his head, and they gave him for wife Adoniah, the Cushite queen wife of Kikianus, and Moses feared the Lord God of his fathers, so that he came not to her, nor did he turn his eyes to her. For Moses remembered how Abraham had made his servant Eliezer swear, saying unto him, Thou shalt not take a woman from the daughters of Canaan for my son Isaac. Also what Isaac did when Jacob had fled from his brother, when he commanded him, saying, Thou shalt not take a wife from the daughters of Canaan, nor make alliance with any of the children of Ham. For the Lord our God gave Ham, the son of Noah, and his children and all his seed, as slaves to the children of Shem, and to the children of Japheth, and unto their seed after them for slaves forever. Therefore Moses turned not his heart nor his eyes to the wife of Cacanus all the days that he reigned over Cush. And Moses feared the Lord his God all his life, and Moses walked before the Lord in truth with all his heart and soul. He turned not from the right way all the days of his life. He declined not from the way either to the right or to the left, in which Abram, Isaac, and Jacob had walked. And Moses strengthened himself in the kingdom of the children of Cush, and he guided the children of Cush with his usual wisdom, and Moses prospered in his kingdom. And at that time Aram and the children of East heard that Kikianus, king of Cush, had died. So Aram and the children of the East rebelled against Cush in those days. And Moses gathered all the children of Cush, and people very mighty, about thirty thousand men, and he went forth to fight with Aram and the children of the East. And they went at first to the children of the east, and when the children of the east heard their report, they went to meet them and engage in battle with them. And the war was severe against the children of the east, so the Lord gave all the children of the east into the hand of Moses, and about three hundred men fell down slain. And all the children of the east turned back and retreated. So Moses and the children of Cush followed them and subdued them, and put a tax upon them, as was their custom. So Moses and all the people with him passed from there to the land of Aram for battle. And the people of Aram also went to meet them, and they fought against them, and the Lord delivered them into the hand of Moses. And many of the men of Aram fell down wounded, and Aram also were subdued 
by Moses and the people of Cush, and also gave their usual tax. And Moses brought Aram and the children of the east under subjection to the children of Cush, and Moses and all the people who were with him turned to the land of Cush. And Moses strengthened himself in the kingdom of the children of Cush, and the Lord was with him, and all the children of Cush were afraid of him. 74. In the end of years died Saul king of Edom, and Baal Chanan the son of Akbor reigned in his place. In the sixteenth year of the reign of Moses over Cush, Baal Chanan the son of Akbor reigned in the land of Edom over all the children of Edom for thirty-eight years. In his days Moab rebelled against the power of Edom, having been under Edom since the days of Adad the son of Bedad, who smote them on Midian and brought Moab under subjection to Edom. When Baal Chanan the son of Akbor reigned over Edom, all the children of Moab withdrew their allegiance from Edom, and Angeas, king of Africa, died in those days, and as Rubal his son reigned in his stead. And in those days died Janias, king of the children of Shittim. And they buried him in his temple, which he had built for himself in the plain of Canopia for residence. And Latinus reigned in his stead. In the twenty-second year of the reign of Moses over the children of Gush, Latinus reigned over the children of Shittim forty-five years. And he also built for himself a great and mighty tower, and he built therein an elegant temple for his residence to conduct his government, and was the custom. In the third year of his reign, he caused a proclamation to be made to all his skillful men, who made many ships for him. And Latinus assembled all his forces, and they came in ships, and went therein to fight with Asrubal, son of Antias, king of Africa. And they came to Africa and engaged in battle with Asrubal and his army. And Latinus prevailed over Asrubal, and Latinus took from Asrubal the Echidac, which his father had brought from the children of Jittim, when he took Jania, the daughter of Isi, for wife. So Latinus overthrew the bridge of the Echidac, <coughs> and smote the whole army of Azrabal a severe blow. And the remaining strong men of Azrabal strengthened themselves, and their hearts were filled with envy, and they courted death and again engaged in battle with Latinus, king of Chittim. And the battle was severe upon all the men of Africa, and they all fell wounded before Latinus and his people. And Azrabal the king also fell in that battle. And the king Azrabal had a very beautiful daughter, whose name was Oshpizena, and all the men of Africa embroidered her likeness on their garments on account of her great beauty and comely appearance. And the men of Latinus saw Oshpizena, the daughter of Azrabal, and praised her unto Latinus their king. And Latinus ordered her to be brought to him, and Latinus took Oshpizena for wife, and he turned back on his way to Jitem. And it was after the death of Azrabal, son of Angias, when Latinus had turned back to his land from the battle, that all the inhabitants of Africa rose up and took Hannibal, the son of Angias, the younger brother of Azrabal, and made him king instead of his brother over the whole land of Africa. And when he reigned, he resolved to go to Chittim to fight for the children of Chittim, to avenge the cause of Azrabal, his brother, and the cause of the inhabitants of Africa, and he did so. And he made many ships, and he came therein with his whole army, and he went to Chittim. So Hannibal fought with the children of Chittim, and the children of Chittim fell wounded before Hannibal and his army. And Hannibal avenged his brother's cause, and Hannibal continued the war for eighteen years with the children of Chittim. And Hannibal dwelt in the land of Chittim and encamped there for a long time. And Hannibal smote the children of Chittim very severely, and he slew their great men and princes, and of the rest of the people he smote about eighty thousand men. And at the end of days and years, Hannibal returned to his land of Africa, and he reigned securely in the place of Azrabal, his brother. <coughs>